What's happening, everybody? Ryan Slocum here during what was supposed to be the second week of the NCAA tournament. But as you know, the coronavirus pandemic has completely taken over the world. All the sports are canceled, and there's pretty much nothing left to watch on TV. So we've come up with a little something to keep you jobbers entertained. We have put together a tournament to decide the worst WrestleMania match of all time. Look at all of this crap. We've narrowed it down to 64 matches, seated 1 through 16, just like the NCAAs in regions named after your favorite terrible wrestlers. Now, here's how it works. We'll all basically go around the table and pick which match is worse than the other, and then that match moves on in the tournament. We'll also call on a few wrestling journalists from PW Torch, the Baltimore Sun, even Rolling Stone all around the country, and we will take calls from wrestling fans of every age, race, color, and creed trying to get a good mix of opinions to decide what is the worst match of all time. There's one catch, though. We all get one veto that can be used in the first two rounds only. So if a match gets eliminated that one of us really thinks should move on, we can keep it alive. And just a heads up, we tape this thing before we were all social distancing, so we are all at the same table, except for our buddy Nick, who's in quarantine. With all that said, let's get to it. It's the 116 matchup. Some believe this is the worst match in WrestleMania history. We are going to begin at the end of the table with Dave, the number one seed in the Rooster division. It is Brett against Vince McMahon. WrestleMania 26 taking on the 16 seed from WrestleMania 6 20 years earlier. The Twin Towers explode. Big Boss Man against Akeem. Dave, the honor is all yours, my friend. I don't know. I was pretty devastated when the Twin Towers broke up. I like know. Most yeah. of us. Right. You know, uh, that, that match at WrestleMania 6 was fantastic. Yeah. You want to know why? Because it was a minute and 49 seconds long. <laughs> Yeah, don't not waste good. don't waste my time with Big Boss Man and Akeem. So yeah, Brett Brett and Vince is definitely advancing. Easy. We I think we've already spent too long on that match as it is. That's an easy one. This one may be a little harder. Uh, this is some crap right here. This is some garbage. The eight nine matchup. We have right to censor versus the APA and Taz. That's from WrestleMania seventeen. Probably the worst match at WrestleMania seventeen. One of the only bad matches at seventeen. The nine seed from 23, Molina against Ashley. This one's a little tougher. These are two pretty bad matches, Jeff. The The choice is yours. Can we all agree that uh, Right to Censor had the best theme music? Uh, Dude, <laughs> that might be the worst. And how about the ramp? The ramp was like a mile long, right. so that uh, it's just going. Dude. In my opinion, yeah. that right there is oh, the reason sure. why that wins. Yeah, that wins, I, and but but it's your choice. That's who I picked. I honestly uh, flipped a coin, and that's who I went with. So, yeah. All right, joining us now for the 5-12 matchup, another one of these, another one that could be an upset, those 12 seeds. It is Sean Radican from the Torch, pwtorch.com. Uh, I've been a Torch subscriber for quite a long time. Would tell anybody to go get on the torch. Tons of good information. The audio is what I'm all over. Sean is here with us now. Sean, thank you so much for being here, man. Thanks for having me. You've got a tough one. Five twelves, just like the NCAAs are always tough. The five is from WrestleMania 33. Cena and Nikki against the Miz and Maurice. The 12 seed, as all of our 12 seeds, are main event matches that didn't end up very good. And it's from WrestleMania 25. Triple H against Randy Orton. Your choice is a tough one. You going with the 5 seed or you going with the 12, Sean? I think it's an easy choice. The 12 seed in this case. Oh. Um, an upset. You know, I, I just, I didn't really, you know, I haven't watched the Cena tag in a while with, uh, you know, against the Miz and Maurice, but. That was nowhere near as offensive as this Triple H Orton main event that I just rewatched. Um, you what? know, they had a, just with the Orton and um, 
Triple H feud, they had so much going into it, you know, or they had taken out the McMahons and, you know, Stephanie, and, you know, he had the whole legacy thing going, and the feud was so personal, and then they just had this really drawn-out, boring match for the WWE Championship, and he's trying to win via count-out, you know, you just, it was just uh, one of the dullest main events I can recall in a, for a major show. Absolutely, and the build to that match as well. I was at the Royal Rumble that year in Detroit. This guy was over, man. That's when he was punting people in the head and all that. And then right. the build, yeah. even the build, it got kind of weird at the end. And then the match, you know, it was one of these Triple H matches. Plotting, lethargic. I, It just, I don't know. I, I'm with you. I didn't think it was good at all. Yeah, and the... The crowd kind of, you know, kind of died. It kind of, it kind of really ended. Like it, it kind of tipped the scales on the show being a good show, or you know what I mean, a good right. show or a bad show. And it right. just left you with such a bad feeling. Um, and you know, given that Undertaker and HBK was on the show, uh, I, I was just surprised that the match was laid out that way to be such a bore. Because or it was so hot, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It kind of. Got a little funky down the stretch, but it was still so well executed that despite any missteps, they, you know, they had what should have been a hot match, but they started and they're just staring at each other. And Triple H is making that face like, uh, who's the Jeff? Is it Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber when he's on the toilet? Yes. Yep. Yeah, he's like making those faces and like. But he makes it again when he he makes the same face for winning the or retaining the title that he does for his wife getting nailed with the you know <laughs> taping DDT. Oh, it, don't it's even get me started. Huh? It's uh, brutal, absolutely brutal. Well, I'm Sean, angry. Uh, we know we can find you in the torch. Tell everybody uh, what you do for the torch and how they can find your stuff and uh, Twitter and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, you can find my work on pwtorch.com, of course, uh, for my Radican Worldwide podcast, where I cover uh, wrestling from all over the world, including New Japan, Ring of Honor, and, you know, independent, uh, you know, go VIP and check out our podcast. We have, uh, you know, podcasts with uh, Bruce Mitchell and Todd Martin and so many others. Um, I do my Rep Worldwide show with my co-host, Back in Worldwide, with my co-host, Rich Fan. Go VIP. It's great. Dude, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much. You got it, man. Thank you. Quarantine Nick gets our next pick, and this one is incredibly controversial. You have maybe the most polarizing match, or one of the most polarizing matches in the history of WrestleMania. It is our four seed. It is Triple H against Sting. It is taking on the 13 seed. This is another one. Pretty polarizing. Undertaker against Shane McMahon. People either love Shane or they hate Shane as well. You have the tough choice here. Triple H Sting or Undertaker Shane. What do you got? Uh, both these are extremely just bad. I don't know how they're polarizing. I don't know who's coming from the other side. Um, being a huge fan of legends of that era like Sting, and being so excited to finally see Sting in a WWE ring at WrestleMania, I was, and I'm still, a little bit frustrated and even a bit angered at what WWE did to him in this match. They turned this in, and you got everybody knows this, it all of a sudden became a WCW versus WWE last shot to the Monday Night Wars. The entrances are completely different, and they make Sting look like a second-rate guy. Triple H gets a Terminator 3 theatrical entrance, if folks remember, a promo by Arnold. He rises from underneath the stage, holding the spines and heads of Terminators he has destroyed. There's Terminator music playing in the background. He's in Terminator gear, as if he is a Terminator set to destroy the last warrior of WCW. Then his real music hits, and he shows zero concern or fear for Sting. Sting's entrance, he gets an Asian drum band. <laughs> and that's it. You, you didn't know Sting is from <laughs> Indonesia? I didn't know. that, but that's Yeah, nothing he moved there back. a few years ago. The most important was the legacy of a legend Sting. They completely ruined Sting in this match, especially to any new fans. 
still to this day, it's one of the few matches, in my opinion, in WrestleMania history that still makes me angry to watch or think about. And, folks, that's why Triple H first thing at WrestleMania 31 is worse than The Undertaker and Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 32. Do you guys have anything to say? I got a ton to say, but I have a feeling this match might go for a while so I can hold off some things. Do you have anything? I have zero problem with this whatsoever. 611 from WrestleMania, Deuce, Mr. T, Rowdy, Roddy Piper in a boxing match at WrestleMania. Okay, taking on the 11 seed from 28, it's Team Johnny against Team Teddy. These are both very bad. Um, Johnny, Teddy, it's more that SmackDown Raw stuff that no one cares about, that they keep running down our throats, red against blue, no one cares, you all work for the same company. It's not believable, it's stupid. And no one cares about uh, Johnny is X-Pac Heat. But, uh, man, Mr. T against Piper. It just sucks. It sucks. The whole thing sucks. They're not touching each other. It's hard to watch. It was hard to watch then. It's hard to watch now. It's cool that it's Mr. T. It's cool Mr. T was at peak of his powers. A-Team was huge. T was huge. Clubber Lang. Yep. But again, I think it's like what Dave said about Brett. I think that's what makes it worse. Because you're seeing him suck. It's bad. And WrestleMania 2 is bad. The announcing is bad. Is that Susan St. James? Is that that? Is she in New York? Yep. She's in New York with with Vince. She has no clue what's going on. No arguments? I'm going to veto it. Veto! Oh! Wow! Wow! (laughs) We have our first veto. What Are we four (laughs) matches deep here? One, two, three, four, five matches in. When I was a kid and I saw it, it was Mr. T and Rowdy Roddy Piper. I I liked it. I'm with you, Jeff. Yeah! You saved... Johnny and Teddy. <laughs> that match is bad. Jeff, I'm with you. That's a final four. But you, yeah. you think that's a final four that match? That's a bad match. It could be. Wow. It's bad. It's, bad. it's at least a sweet 16. I, I mean, mean, I ain't mad about it. I'm just saying. Okay. No, but you, it, don't. All right. Let's move on. We have our veto. Jeff's veto is gone. He I'm saved sorry, Team Johnny and Team Teddy. All righty. Well, let's move on. Dave, we're back to you, brother. The 3 and 14. It's Bam Bam and Luna Vashon against Doink and Dink from WrestleMania 10. That is facing Andre Battle Royal from last year. Braun Strowman is your winner, as you knew he would be. Dave, your call. I'll tell you what. When I was first filling out my bracket, and I've kind of gone back and made some changes here and there, without question or hesitating, Without question. What's up, Conrad? I put down Bam versus Doink. Right. Uh, back back in the day, watching it live, I couldn't stand either of those wrestlers. Right. I couldn't stand Doink, like face Doink, heel Doink. I didn't care. He was a clown. <laughs> Literally. Going back and watching the Battle Royal from WrestleMania 35 and having Braun Strowman win, which we knew was going to happen, and having him mess with the saturday night live guys is just such a waste and it makes them look ridiculous it doesn't make them look like a powerhouse or you know anybody that's going to dominate anybody and and they've they've booked him all wrong since day one uh i know a lot of people don't like him don't like his work don't like him on the mic i've always been a a fan of the bigger muscly wrestle wrestling guys because that's who would win i mean let's let's face it and the fact that he's even given in any offense to to uh, the Saturday Night Live guys and everything, it's just it just makes them look stupid, and makes them look weak for the future going forward. So, even though I originally picked Bam Bam, wow. I'm gonna go with wow. WrestleMania 35. Especially the kids love to see the midgets. Wow, and not anymore. <laughs> Gone. That's a big one. If you didn't recognize, if you're looking at our bracket at all, if you didn't realize, every seven seed is a match from WrestleMania Seven. In my opinion. It is a underrated 
terrible WrestleMania. I, I think that's one of the bottom five manias of all time. Whatever, that's me. We'll find out what everybody else thinks, though. And we're going to start right now. The seven seed, the million dollar man against Virgil. Taking on the 10 seed from WrestleMania 11, another terrible WrestleMania. Bret Hart says this is his worst match ever. It's the I Quit match against Bob Backlund. Jeffrey. That's what I thought. I didn't. <laughs> I picked that match. I didn't. I mean, and I that's could, all we need to hear, folks. I couldn't go with DiBiase versus Virgil. I, I was like, you know. Well, I mean, it wasn't a five-star classic. But no, it was not. You know, it was not at all. Look at all of this crap. Yeah, that's about. It was terrible. <laughs> I don't have an argument. It's bad, Jeff. One reason over the other why it was so bad. No. Well, all right. Thanks for the insight. Yeah. Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's yeah. So, <laughs> we'll just move right on. Trump, uh, Trump would have picked DiBiase. Yeah, Virgil. Trump would have had DiBiase, absolutely, because it's all about that money. Quarantine, Nick, the choice is yours. Now, this one moved up a little bit. Some people say this is seated too high. I think I originally had it as a four, talking to everybody else. Every other person I talked to had this match as a two seed, so we put it there as the two seed. It's Cena and The Miz at 27, arguably the worst main event in WrestleMania history, taking on... The squash match from WrestleMania 8. It's Owen and Skinner. I don't think this one's too difficult to pick. Nick, go ahead. I uh, We can easily just do this, I think. Owen versus Skinner was bad, but who cares, right? It was a filler match on right. the car. Cena Miz at 27, definitely worse than Owen Skinner. And definitely. Skinner has had a match at WrestleMania, a singles match. Dolph Ziggler, zero. I think that's all that we need to know about that. Let's move on to the Isaac Yankum region, and I'm just going to keep this simple. It's my pick, 116. Gang and Bam Bam from four against Cole Lawler at 27. Cole Lawler, off the top of my head, whenever I tell anybody, Cole Lawler is the worst match in WrestleMania history, in my opinion. That I've said that since the day it's happened. That was nine years ago. I've had that. Now, there are some other things that have happened that make me iffy. But if I had to pick one gun to my head, Cole Lawler is the worst match in WrestleMania history. I think we're done. We don't even need to talk about that. Am I right? It is Razor Ramon against Bob Backlund. That is your eight seed taking on from the first <laughs> WrestleMania. It's Brutus, the barber beefcake, taking on not Bruno San Martino. He is taking on David <laughs> Sam Martino, and you can hear the laughing in the background from the gold-selling album Compton by Dr. Dre, also the Call of Duty video game commercial, the soundtrack of the Predator rapper, producer from Flint, the Fly City. It is John Connor. John, What's thanks for up, being man? here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know what? Thank you for having me on this esteemed panel uh, to discuss horrible WrestleMania matches. If there's anything that I was this as good at as far as rapping, it's calling out terrible WrestleMania matches. Broski, thank you for having me. You get the pleasure of uh, deciding what's worse, crap or poop. What do you got here, brother? <laughs> you know what? So, first of all, just because I was born in 1985, right? So, when I watch anything from WrestleMania 1, it's pretty much trash to me. I'm so sorry, but that that is that is really the way it is. Like anything from WrestleMania one is kind of hard for me to watch. So the saving grace for uh, Razor Ramon and Bob Backlund is at least it has Razor Ramon in it. You know what I'm saying? At least right. there's at some point you can watch at, you can watch this match and say, well, at least it's Razor. Ramon. You know, it's Scott Hall. It, you know, he oozing machismo. It's a beautiful thing. And, it's a, and, and, and the atmosphere of WrestleMania 9, you got the whole Toga party. It was the first outdoor WrestleMania. It's aesthetically pleasing to the eye to watch. Um, you know, it was Razor Ramon as a heel before he was just a million time Intercontinental Champion babyface. Like, it was a good time. It, it, it was a good time to be a fan of Razor Ramon. So, that by itself, you know, 
the the negatives of that match is strictly Bob Backlund. Like, <laughs> the worst part of that match is just the fact that Bob Backlund is in it. So no one knew who he was at that point. None of us. We we're like, who is this freaking guy? Yo, look, I'm gonna tell you what's so horrible about that is if my memory serves me correct. Bob Backlund was the face and Razor Ramon was the heel. Right. I feel like they cheered Razor Ramon after he won that match. They so, might have a little bit, but I think I think they were cheering that it was over. Like I think <laughs> it, like <laughs> Brutus versus San Martino, and you know it's bad when Brutus looks like friggin' Bret Hart in there because David San Martino <laughs> sucks so bad. Wow. He looks like one of the best technicians you've ever seen, and that's Brutus. Like, nice try, Bruno. Your your kid can't wrestle. No, I think the biggest disappointment is it was pre-barber for Brutus. Right. So we didn't get to see him cut any hair. He did, but he did cut the best promo, arguably, in WrestleMania history before that. Yes. Remember that? He gets in there, and he just goes... <laughs> that, that He was basically <laughs> foreshadowing what was going to happen in, in his match. Well, Johnny, we appreciate you, man, and you're not done, dude. You've been in the lab. You've been working. You have been uh, super busy the last couple of months. Tell everybody what's going on. Tell them where they can find your stuff now. Uh, no longer with Aftermath, but you have uh, stuff coming, and it is coming soon, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, started my own record company after five years of being at Aftermath, which was super cool going to you know, the Dr. Dre School of Learning as far as music goes. So graduated with honors, started my own company now, All Varsity Music, and we'll be releasing my first project on that label, SOS, which is coming in April. And, um, yeah, look out for it, man, just uh, providing people with a soundtrack to these crazy times, man. Yeah, absolutely, and, dude, I'm not blowing smoke. I've told you this before. I've heard the album. Dave, you've heard a couple songs. Jeff, you've heard a couple of songs on the album. I am a huge John Connor fan, and for anybody who is out there, this is top to bottom the best project he has done. Top to bottom, no smoke, no nothing. It, it is a good album. You will enjoy it. Go look for that in April. SOS is on the way. John, dude, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes. All right, we go to Nick for this one. It's the five twelve matchup. Another tough one. WrestleMania 16 against WrestleMania 16. It's Terry and the Cat, the five seed, taking on, as all the 12s are, main events from WrestleManias. This one, not too many people like. It's the McMahon in every corner. Triple H against The Rock, against Foley, against Big Show. And it was really just McMahon against McMahon. We go to Orlando, Florida, and quarantine Nick. Tough choice right here, man. I got to give it to the, uh, the main event. You expect the main event at WrestleMania to be a main event. You know, the promo by Nick Foley, I want this match to be remembered for the next 20 years. That's a quote. It will be, but not for a good reason. You know, yeah, it was. It, it's not, it's a fatal four-way between the McMahon, the WWE Championship, Foley's final match that they were building, Triple H proving he belongs amongst the greats, all forgotten and secondary. I got to give this to the McMahon in every corner. I mean, the other match is god-awful. I wouldn't recommend watching that either. But this was our main <laughs> event right. at WrestleMania. All right, now it's up to me here. We've got the four in the 13, the four seed, WrestleMania 22. Great WrestleMania, I believe, by the way. This match is not. It's the Playboy pillow fight. Tori Wilson against Candice Michelle taking on... The 13 seed, Dean Ambrose against Brock Lesnar. Now, this is tough for two different reasons. First of all, Playboy pillow fight, right? We know we're not getting any uh, great uh, moves here. No arm Not moves. one pillow was used in this match. Zero. Lesnar and Ambrose, I rewatched this again. I remember my exact thoughts when it happened. I rewatched it again this week. The match is not that bad, in all honesty. The problem with this match was the buildup. They hyped this thing like it was going to be the end-all, be-all, make ECW look like, you know, kindergarten. 
It was supposed to be the bloodiest, goriest thing we had ever seen. You had Mick Foley come out and gift Ambrose a weapon. You had Terry Funk come out and gift Ambrose a weapon to use in this match. It seemed like it was just going to be insane. Oh, my gosh. Like the AEW match that he just recently had. It just seemed like another Monday Night Raw match. We got a kendo stick and like 15 friggin' German suplexes, okay? Yawn. I don't care. It was so bad that Ambrose has even talked about it constantly, including on the WWE Network. He jobbed Lesnar, jobbed the match, talked about him, talked about everything but his mama on this match, about how bad Lesnar was to work with, didn't want to do anything, all of that. Because of the hype, because of the build, then we just got a regular match that should be on Monday Night Raw. I'm going with the 13 seed. I'm taking the upset here. How about this one? Wouldn't have a problem with either one of these moving on, but I have a feeling what might happen. We're going to Dave 611, WrestleMania 2. Shockingly, another match from WrestleMania 2. Wow. Um, Uncle Elmer. Against adorable Adrian Adonis. It meets the 11 seed from 23. Well, now that I say that, things might change. You were in attendance for this, along with me at Ford Field. All grown up, and your grown's up, and your grown's up. The ECW Originals against the new breed. What do you got? WrestleMania 23 is my first and only WrestleMania that I've ever been to. And, uh, man, we had a great time. We had a great it, it, it time. It was great. I mean, yeah, it was awesome. We got to go Got to go down to ringside and watch the, the first match and part of the Money in the Bank match. Yeah, that was sweet. It, it was such a cool experience. Um, but let me talk about Elmer and Adrian Adonis. I watched that match actually today, this morning, again. I'm sorry. I am, too. I... Uh, yeah, it was a crapper. <laughs> I may have watched it in the crapper. Just in case. Just in case. Well, there's a toilet paper shortage. You can use this match to clean up. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, it's terrible. It, everything about it was awful. That being said, WrestleMania oh. 23, ECW Originals versus the New Breed. <clears throat> I was in attendance for this match. Yeah, we established that. Yeah, lots of lots of good stuff. I haven't seen this match to this day. I was in the bathroom you remember. the whole time. Yes. Seven minutes and 27 seconds. There was a line, so, you know, it wasn't all. That's a heck of a dump. That, that, yeah, right? Yeah. But, no, there was definitely line time there. <laughs> and and I'm sure I grabbed some food. I, I had no interest in this match. Zero. I've never been an ECW guy. I, I couldn't care less about any of the new breed, which I think this might be the only time that any of them ever wrestled. Elijah Burke, Matt Stryker, Marcus Corvan, Kevin Thorne. It's hard for me to, uh, you know, take a match that I've never even seen, but I didn't want to watch it and I was there. So that one's going to have to move on. Wow. 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 Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> If I'm at a WrestleMania and I don't watch that match for that for a particular reason, um, wow, Nick, they, er, Jeff's already used his veto. This is a match that could win the whole thing. Online, we have had numerous people on the Twitter machine pick this to win the entire thing. Uh, shout out to Bryce Crittenden. His final four includes Uncle Elmer and Adonis. His championship match includes Elmer and Adonis, and he has Elmer and Adonis winning the whole thing. Bryce, sorry, bro. You have just been eliminated. I can't say that I'm super excited about it, but I am not going to no. use my veto on this match. And and Bryce wasn't – he's not wrong. The match is bad. And I'm and one thing that and Dave kind of illustrates, at least I know who Uncle, Uncle Elmer is. I could not pick those half the guys in that other match out of a lineup right now. Moving on. This is a big one. This is a big one. This could be a tied turning match. And it comes out to Chatty Pants over here. See if he can figure this one out. Jeff, you have the honor 
Now, here's another one. You and I were at this one. WrestleMania 34. The match everybody's been talking about for a decade. Everybody wanted to see this match. This match could be the match that could completely turn the tide of the entire WWE. John Cena against The Undertaker. What will happen when they fight? Will Cena be the one to break the streak? Well, by the time they finally fought, the streak was over. It takes on the throwaway match from WrestleMania 7. I believe there's five matches from WrestleMania 7 on this tournament. It's the earthquake against Greg the Hammer Valentine. It was such a big deal that they interviewed a bunch of celebrities while those guys were walking to the ring. Lou Ferrigno got a bigger pop. <laughs> This is a where to begin. Where to begin? We were at WrestleMania 34. Yes, we were. Undertaker Cena. We saw Cena sitting in the audience. Yes, we did. We Cena were right there. Cena was waiting for something to happen, and then the match happened, and then it was over. At Wrestle <laughs> WrestleMania, it was what two minutes? <laughs> Forty-five yeah, like, seconds. This yeah. was not the Undertaker Cena match that I wanted to see. I picked that match. Just it wasn't even a match. What was it? It wasn't. It was I'm a still, squash. I'm, I'm still wondering. And we still don't know. Like no news ever broke. Was Undertaker hurt? He I, did I take know. a belly to back. He took one belly to back. Like could he not take bumps? What was going on here? Why did he not? Why did we get a squash? The more and more I think about it, I was mad then that night. The more and more I think about it. Over the past two years. I get ticked. This could have been awesome. This was the last Legends match they had. Right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it, dude. For the 7-10 matchup, once oh, again, WrestleMania 7. Demolition against the fearsome duo from Japan, Tenru and Katao. Cyber Nick, whatever the heck we're calling you. Quarantine Nick. What do you got? This one hits the heart <laughs> of Quarantine Nick. <laughs> I'm sitting here, folks, in a demolition t shirt you bought me doing this podcast. Yes. You know, this is my favorite tag team. It, it, this is, and I'll go toe to toe with people. The greatest WWE tag team in the history of the company, Bruce Pritchard, agrees with me saying that. The winner of this contest is Demolition versus Kenru and Katow. It's still the Demolition be, damn it. <laughs> a smash and crush. We're talking, they were a glorified jobber team. They were the only, and what I mean by glorified to, uh, jobber, the only time they win was with Red Tyler and Salvatore Bellamo on <laughs> Sunday morning Superstar. <laughs> That, that's where that's where they're at. No one on the North American continent knew who the hell Kenru and Kitao were. Yeah, as you still as, don't. No. As far as the North American audience goes, it's a Sunday morning superstars match at WrestleMania. The match is boring, and it is such a horrible way, guys, for this team to go out. LOD is on this same card fighting, I think, Power and Glory. Why couldn't L Power and Glory, why couldn't LOD retire them? It's such a horrible way for them to go out. Demolition versus Kenru and Katow is the winner in this match. I, I, I got to go hands down. As bad as Men on a Mission is, and I thought, I don't remember which Quebecer it is, the end of that match, I thought they killed him. When Mo got on the top rope, jumped on to Mabel and flattened, dude, I thought, I like, they're, they're all dead. Last match, we're going to Dave. We're going to wrap up the Isaac Yankum region in round number one. It's the two seed. This one's bad. Booker T, Charmel against the Boogeyman, taking on another one from WrestleMania 10. It's Earthquake against Adam Bomb. Speaking of Bomb, look at all of this crap. I think this was another go out to play basketball match. It might have been. I, I don't recall watching that. WrestleMania 10 is a polarizing one, too. Obviously, you've got the Brett Owen match. You've got the ladder match that are awesome. But then there is some garbage the rest of this card. I don't have much to say. I'm going to do everybody a favor. Booker T. Charmel versus the Boogeyman. All right, moving on to the Gobbly Gooker region. 
Maybe the greatest promo of all time comes from the 16th seed, the very first promo in WrestleMania history. It's Tito Santana against the Executioner, who is yeah, go after the leg Santana. It's a beautiful promo there. Uh, Executioner with his crooked mask taking on Tito Santana. Uh, was the executioner from Parts Unknown? I forgot. Was Not it? only is he from Parts <laughs> Unknown, his weight is unknown. Right? This man is so dangerous. He would not get on the scale. Right. He is a dangerous man. He, yeah. He goes after the leg. Right. Yeah. You don't want to mess with him. Yeah. Uh, Lesnar Goldberg. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Nine easy. Eight. All right. Second matchup in the gobbledygooker region, the eight, nine matchup. Wow. Another Undertaker match. I thought he had nothing but five-star classics at WrestleMania. From WrestleMania 19, it's the Taker, supposed to be Nathan Jones. Dude's a no-show until the end of the match. Taking on the Big Show and the A-Train. And they face Head Cheese. <laughs> head Cheese. Against TNA. From WrestleMania 16. This is a tough one. These are two not good matches at all. Does Quarantine that... Nick, it is up to you, my friend. All right, I'll try to look at this one. Let's see here. The Undertaker, he's now become, we got to look at Biker Taker, right? This is Biker so this Taker. This is rolling, taker. rolling, rolling Taker. This match, it's it's not even worth, I don't even think people wanted to see it. Um. As far as the head cheese match, people don't even remember that match was on a card, man. Um, the one, maybe they remember Trish Stratus. I'm sorry, The Undertaker versus Big Show and Albert at 19 is the winner in this one. This head cheese TNA thing, though, is really They're bad. Up. Chester McCheeserton, they have technical problems. JR's mic goes out. There's yeah, a buzz yeah. on the thing. There's no heat, though. No one, even after some cool moves, there are some cool moves in this match. And yeah. the crowd is dead. The crowd is absolutely toast. That's four guys no one cares about. I would probably, after going back and watch this, I would probably take Head Cheese. I'm not going to veto it, though. Are they in the Hall of Fame? Head Cheese? Yeah. No, man, they oh. just missed out again. WrestleMania 23, Kane against the great Kali. It takes on the 12 seed. All of the 12 seeds are main events from WrestleMania. This one comes from WrestleMania 18. I was at both of these. What would you say? A third of the Sky Dome left. They did not watch this match. People were leaving after that Rock Hogan match. They were done. No one cared about this match. We got back to the hotel, and we ran into some dudes standing outside, and they saw we had wrestling stuff on. And they're like, hey, who won the main event? We're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, we left. Yeah. We couldn't believe it. And we knew people had left, but we ran into some kids. And we're like, you guys really left? We're like, yeah, we didn't care. The build to this match was absolutely terrible. Triple H, the triumphant return, once again, turns into a McMahon saga. Go figure. They're fighting over, like, custody of the dog. The match was not terribly worked, but no one cared. This let me down, and I really didn't think it'd be great either, but it let me, the bit, I don't care. It made me feel like I wasted my money. It made me feel like I wasted driving to freaking Canada. The four seed, Butterbean, and Bart Gunn. The brawl for all finals lasted all of two seconds. Uh, against the big show, Floyd Mayweather. I hate both of these. I can't stand them. I I mean, the, the Bart Gunn match, again, at least it was quick. You know, you, you, you don't even have a chance to go to the restroom. That's how quick it was. So right. if you're going to do something like that, I don't, I don't mind, you know, just shooting through it real quick. But we had to sit through the big show for 15, 20 minutes when you, for everything. You know, you, you have intros. Uh, promos, all that stuff. Like, come on. And, and, and not to mention that match was the second to last match of the night. Right. Leading up to what I think was actually one of Undertaker's better matches yeah. against Edge. It's a great WrestleMania. So the fact that that is your popcorn match. Right. 
I mean, come on. I, I just, no. We have another 13 seed moving on. Another 13 seed moving on. Hey, Mr. WrestleMania 2, the luck of the draw. Let me guess what he's not going to pick. You got two underwear on too? Ding, what do you got? What are you ding, doing ding. over here? You got your mula, <laughs> you got your mula G string on, don't you? Don't let him intimidate you about two, Jeff. No, the I six can't. I can't. eleven matchup. Ladies championship. Coming in at seventy four years of age, fabulous mula. Not nice. Taking a, Oh, I'm sorry. Seventy one years of age, fabulous mula. Taking on. Velvet McIntyre. This match against another ladies match. The 10 Diva tag match from WrestleMania 26. Mr. Deuce. Speaking of which, yes, you're up. The 10 Diva tag moves on. This guy. That's hot. I'm going to veto you. Can we v yeah, just veto yeah. him? Hey, I th can we get one of the production people over here? I'm Seriously. With can we just veto yeah. seat number three? Yeah. Well, I'm just giving you crap. I would actually take this match because I have okay. watched this match. Right. This match is terrible. It's awful. If there's anybody worse on earth than Vicky Guerrero, tell me who it is. This whole match is booked around Vicky Guerrero. The whole thing. They're like, she gets such a good reaction. No. no. This was get away and never come back. Go into quarantine with Nick and never come back. And take Jeff with you. And take Two Boy over <laughs> here. By the way, Chris Tubbs, old Tubby has chimed in. We've pretty much eliminated his entire Final Four already. I am sorry. Bam Bam, Doink, Terry and the Cat, Head Cheese TNA. Yeah, so that's it. Sorry, Tubby. Three, Miss Mania Battle Royal from WrestleMania 25. It is taken on the 14 seed. Not The Rock. Not The Rock. Rocky Mayavia. Oh, boy. Against The Sultan. WrestleMania 13. Um, This isn't hard. This isn't hard. I'm not going to take a lot of time on this. And this is from a Santino fan. I liked Santino. I thought when he first got with Beth Phoenix, I thought it was hilarious when he was doing the honka meter, trying to beat Honky Tonk's record for the you, Intercontinental Champion. You sold, I you thought, sold me. I thought it was great. I thought it was hilarious. By this point, it had jumped the shark and then drowned. I mean, this this was it was terrible. The second you saw him in the ring and realized it was him, you knew what was going to happen. It just was stupid. It was a waste of time. Three seed Miss Mania Battle Royal. Moving on. All right, Nick, we go to you. Seven seed WrestleMania seven, the Mountie against Tito Santana takes on another terrible match from WrestleMania five. Bad News Brown against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. So bad. Like, both gimmicks are terrible. If you thought the Rougeau brothers were bad, well, here's the Mountie, even worse. You know, and Tito, I'll give him it. You're talking 1986, 1985. He's one of the best performers in the ring in, in that era. He's amazing. If, if you don't believe me, go back and watch his matches. He's moving around that ring better than most guys. All but right. at this point, it's over. Well, and it's a quick match. I think they were short on time. It's real yep. quick. Hits him with a stunner. Whatever it was, cattle prod. Yeah. Over. For our last match in the Gobbly Gooker region, it's the 215 matchup. Man, we got some bad ones. And on the bracket, this sucker just says Snooky. That's all it says. That's all it needs to say. Does it need to say anything else? All you need to do is say Jersey Shore. <laughs> All you need to do is say Snooky. That's all that matters. It's a six-man tag from WrestleMania 27 with Snooky taking on the 15 seed Kurt Angle's last match against Baron Corbin of all people. Here to talk of that about that one, 
is a longtime wrestling fan, over 30 years. This is how I got to know this guy. Zach, you would think this was yeah. kind of easy, but uh, it might not be. A lot of Kurt Angle fans not happy with this one. It's up to you. Now, as disappointing as it might be for a lot of people, Kurt Angle needed to be put out the pasture at that point because <laughs> he looked pretty rough. So I wasn't super disappointed with how things worked out, and you could elevate a younger guy. But there's just no excuse for Snooky, so Snooky's the winner. I don't have a problem with that no. at all, whatsoever. She actually did okay. Yep. She went in the ring for one second, did some backflips or something, but <sighs> poor Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, that, that, that's rough. Just, that, they could have found somebody better for the celebrity killing that. Yeah. Bring back Maria Menino. <laughs> Was she here yet? Did we see her yet? She pooped her pants, I think, a couple WrestleManias later. Did she not? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I remember when she had the stain there, but <laughs> Nookie's one, one big stain instead of just a small one wow. on somebody's pants. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good yet. Somehow she still get cash and checks. Appreciate you helping us out, Thank dude. You. Um, enjoy the rest of the tournament. Will do. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. All right, moving on to the Bastion Booger region, our final region. We're going to quarantine Nick. It's the 116 matchup. These have been super easy so far. I assume this is the same. Some people's worst match of all time. It's Undertaker, Giant Gonzalez, WrestleMania 9. And it takes on from WrestleMania 4. It's Why? rude. Against the snake. This one goes 15 minutes. Time limit draw. I assume this has no chance against Gonzalez. Gonzalez, I mean, can we all be in agreement? He's one of the worst, if not the worst, worker in the company at the period of WrestleMania 9. Look at you, he giant idiot. He wore a body suit with airbrush muscles and fur. You um, didn't like that fur? Strategically yeah, placed? Yeah. No, I didn't. I, I wasn't a big fan of the fur. Look at so, you, giant first, idiot. Let's say this, and I'll put this out there maybe for another time. The Undertaker is vastly overrated for his in-ring ability. And it at, shows Wrestle it, at WrestleMania. It, it shows in many of these matches because he can't carry guys when the other guy is terrible. All right, let's keep it in the Bastion Booger region, and we go to the 8-9 matchup. And joining us to make this pick is Aaron Oster. He is a columnist for the Baltimore Sun, great wrestling town, horseman country out there, also Rolling Stone. Aaron, thank you so much for being here with us, man. No problem. Excited to do this. Nice uh, to actually get a bracket with March Madness done. You got a tough one here now. The 8-9s are always tough. Extremely tough for me because I think that both of these are extremely underseated. I think that you could make a case that when it comes to these matches, obviously there are different reasons to put them high. Obviously, some of them are just major disappointments. Some of them are high profile matches that didn't reach the high profile, and others are just really bad matches. And two, these two matches are, are kind of the archetypes for both. <laughs> On one hand, you have the Bushwhackers and the Rougeos, which legitimately might be the worst match I've ever seen involving. <laughs> People who are actually good. So take out the, the Cole Lawler, the, the, the guys who don't shouldn't be in the ring. And it looks like the Bushwhackers were drunk. It looked like they had no idea what they were doing in the ring. It was a horrific match. And then the weirdest move I might have seen in wrestling history happened when uh, Raymond picked up Luke for a body slam. Luke tries to reverse it in uh, no other way I can explain it by he tried to jack off Raymond. I'm still not sure what happened there. Um, it was very, very weird, and then you can find it to Google this match. It'll pop up immediately. Don't do it at work, um, though. On the other hand, you have Bray and Orton. You know, this, this match should have been everything that we wanted, a five-month build for the title, everything great. The last few weeks were, were rough, I'll give you that. But before that, we all loved the build. And then the match happened, <laughs> and they booked it stupidly with those lights and the magic and the flies, which didn't make sense as it is. We still don't know what exactly was happening. They never explained it. It was just, oh, that's weird. It clearly didn't, you know, mess with Randy at all, considering that third light turned immediately into an RKO almost. It was in a bad place in the car, so it was one of those things. It should have been much better. It was a bad match, but because it should have been so much better, 
it seemed a whole lot worse uh, than it actually was, even though it was also really bad. So the way that I'm kind of phrased this, this is the worst match technically versus quite possibly the worst booked match. So you got a tough one, man. You got a tough yeah, one. Which way are you going to go? I'm going to go with Bray versus Orton just because it should have been so much more. But I don't want anyone to think that, like, this is a bad beating. This is a tough draw for Bushwhackers or Joes and bad beating because, my God, this could be a Final Four matchup in any other situation. Hey, Aaron, let everybody know where they can read you, where they can check you out, and uh, plug whatever you want to plug here. Let us know where to find you. All right, you can uh, first off follow me on Twitter at C-A-Oster, A-O-S-T. You can find my work in the Baltimore Sun. I also have a weekly podcast, Jobbing Out, and you can find that on iTunes uh, and any place you find podcasts, Jobbing Out. Jobbing Out. Aaron, we appreciate your time, man. Great insight. Take care. Thanks, man. All right, thanks. All right, let's move on to the infamous 5-12 matchup. And here to talk to us about that is Mr. Eric Columbia. He is a sports reporter and wrestling aficionado from Spectrum in Syracuse, up there at the Dome. What's going on? I, I, dude, that is basketball country. You guys have got to be pretty bored right now. So this is coming at the perfect time, this tournament we're doing, right? I couldn't have asked for a bigger godsend right now <laughs> than the worst WrestleMania matches of all time bracket because not that Syracuse themselves are going to be in the NCAA tournament, but... We do like some basketball here in Central New York, and uh, we're craving anything bracket-related during these times. It's Sheamus against Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania 28, the 12 seed. Also controversial for even being in this tournament. It's Hogan and Andre from WrestleMania 4. Eric Columbia, it is up to you to decide who goes on to the second round. What do you got, man? The way I was breaking this down, there were three questions that I was asking myself. Which match is more memorable? Which is more disappointing? And I just wanted to know what match had more oddities in this one, right? So when I was breaking down all of these things, I think we're going to have an upset in this 12-5. Andre Hogan, in my mind, is just, an abomination for what these two wrestlers and what their resumes wow. have in their story histories, right? So wow. you have a whole pay-per-view built around this storyline of Hogan and Andre. It goes back all the way to WrestleMania 3. Yes. And we build a whole WrestleMania tournament around the storyline of the title getting off Hogan and, and Andre selling the title to Ted DiBiase. For this one to go, what, like, seven minutes and then both DQ'd? I'm with you because I think this match blows. It's so bad. Now, if you remember, those of us who were old enough, what uh, even what a VHS tape is, this match, you had to switch the tapes. Do you remember that? When Hogan is in yeah. that bear hug for like an hour and a half, this match sucks. That's how important that match was. That it needed two tapes? Yeah, it needed two tapes. You know what I needed? Two what? rolls of toilet no, paper, right, and you right. can't even find one nowadays. That's what I needed for this yeah. match. I this... don't know what you'd have to do to get two rolls of toilet paper now. <laughs> I don't want to know. I mean, all you you're get... basically saving is a Hulk Hogan pose. The posing at the end of the match was longer than the actual match itself. Hey, Hogan's got a pose, brother. I heard that somewhere. I yeah, let, Let's talk yeah, about somewhere. that for a minute. How long did he pose after getting double disqualified? Where... Almost as long as that bear hug went. Where he should have been disqualified in the first place for being the first one to use the chair. It's like Han Solo. Han Solo shot first. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, Hogan and should have been DQ. The biggest thing about this Hogan Andre whole setup in WrestleMania 4 is the actual Hogan promo before. You guys remember? You got a dog paddle once yes. I, I slam Andre and the, the earth starts crumbling into the ocean, brother. All I got to say is thank God Trump is a Hulk maniac, right? <laughs> Eric, I love you, brother. Well, My dude, good talking to you, man. Thanks, man. All right, for this next matchup, it's the 413, WrestleMania 15, Undertaker against Boss Man, going up against WrestleMania 9, the return of Hulk Hogan, the Mega Maniacs taking on Money, Inc. 
And for this one, it's interesting. We're going to go to someone who was not born when this either of these matches took place. So all he knows is what he's heard and what he's seen on the network. So he has zero interesting perspective because he has zero remembrance, obviously, of when this actually happened. We go to 13-year-old Drew, Nicholas's best friend. 13-year-old Drew, it's up to you, big fella. Which one of these two matches and why are you picking that one to move on to the second round? I knew of the uh, IRS and DEIC against Hulk Hogan and Brutus about the week eight, the next round. And what because, was the problem with that match? I don't know. It was just really dumb. Do you know what's up with The Undertaker and Boss Man? What the feud was? What do you think of the match? It's a Hell in a Cell match. Those were relatively new back then. It kind of boring. It seems like a normal Taker match. Okay. Um, but when he was up to the cell, he got punched and he fell in the handcuffs and like ripped apart. Yeah. Not good. That was really dumb. Yeah. No. Um, what do you think about, um? I don't know, committing murder during the <laughs> match? Uh... You know, it. we went back to, like, the Old West, and we hung the police officer from the cage and killed him. <laughs> um, did, did that affect you in any way, 13-year-old uh, Drew? I just thought that was dumb. Yeah, murder is dumb. Murder, <laughs> I don't recommend murder. It's dumb. Yes. But not as bad as watching IRS, is what you're telling me. I thought that match was worse than the Boss Man match. Because, you know, like they were just going to run away from the ring and get counted out and take their titles with them. But then the refs go and change the rules. And they say if they get counted out, they're going to take their titles away. Let this be a lesson to all listening, watching, whatever at home. Bionic brother Brudai and his friend back from the dead and Irwin R. Scheister are more offensive than murder. What What is your worst WrestleMania match of all time? <laughs> Michael Cole versus Barry the King Hall at WrestleMania 27. A lot of folks. 13-year-old Drew. We appreciate you calling in, man, and uh, say hi to Nicholas for us, if you would. All right. We have the six eleven matchup coming to me. I don't even know what to say about this, man. I mean, what hasn't been said? Bad News Brown against Rowdy, Roddy Piper from WrestleMania six. It takes on the four-way tag team title match at WrestleMania 13. Headbangers are in there. Bunch of other garbage. I'm taking Bad News Piper. Bad News is self-explanatory. None of his matches ever end. He walks out of every Survivor Series. He gets DQ'd or a count-out or whatever. This is a count-out. Roddy Piper is half black for some reason. He thought it was a Michael Jackson thing. And he thought he was Michael Jackson, and he's doing Staying Alive, Bee Gees, who last time I checked, they are not black. Nope. They are quite white. Yep. Eskimos believe the Bee Gees are white men. These are some of the whitest people ever. And this dude paints himself half black. And he's staying alive in the ring. It was such a dumb idea that he can't even explain it till his last days when he was asked, what were you doing? I would like to ask Vince that same question when he booked this match. It sucks. And I hate it. And I think that's the worst part is, you know, you think of some of the gimmicks and and spots that they had back in the day, and it's not even close to anything that we can do now. And he's supposed to be babyface. That was the biggest thing. He's supposed to be babyface. Paying himself. What are you doing? 
Piper's second run was really bad. Outside of the match at eight with Bret Hart, <clears throat> Piper's second run was bad. The three fourteen matchup comes from New Orleans. Tag team title match. Braun Strowman and a mystery partner. This is another one like Snooky. The bracket doesn't have any of what I just said. It just says Nicholas. That's all it says because that's all it needs to say. He pulled a nine-year-old kid out of the crowd to be his tag team partner. That match is up against Kelly Kelly, Maria Menounos, against Beth Phoenix, Eve Torres. Eve Torres. WrestleMania 28. She pooped her pants, allegedly, in the match. Or it was makeup, whatever it was. Wearing white pants in the ring, maybe not the greatest idea in the world. It was bad. Dave, go ahead. Pull an 11-year-old kid from the crowd. While it's a cool moment for the kid, again, you got Braun Strowman doing something that makes, they try to make him look tough, and it makes him look silly. Absolutely. Not to mention, Braun Strowman going over a tag team, which I actually thought was pretty good, and I thought they had great chemistry. I didn't mind them. In the bar, no. And it was something good to do with both characters. Yeah, both were stale, needed something. And and they completely job out to Braun Strowman and Nicholas. <laughs> that was another thing I was at. And I was left saying, I flew to New Orleans. I bought an overpriced ticket to see wow. this. It, uh, it was awful. After this the, could win the whole thing. Yeah. Braun Strowman and Nicholas move on. Yeah. Enough said. All right, let's keep it in the Bastion Booger region. The 7-10 matchup. It is from WrestleMania 7, like every 7 seed is. Jake the Snake against the model Rick Martell in that blindfold match. And it is up against the 10 seed. Oh, this one is a dumpster fire. It is Dino Bravo and Rugged Ronnie Garvin. That is John Connor, rapper, producer, gold-selling artist. And John Connor, dude, thanks for being with us once again, man. Which one do you have there, dude? Rugged Ronnie Garvin. Garvin and Dino Bravo definitely is the the worst of the two because the blindfold match was actually a cool concept. I feel like the build for the blindfold match was crazy good. I was invested emotionally. Uh, they got the crowd involved. There was a lot of things about the blindfold match that, you know, depending on what side of the track you were on, it was actually a good match. I, I'm a fan of the blind. I'm actually a fan of the blindfold match. And I will tell you this, too. I'm not a fan of any match that has rugged running garbage in it. <laughs> and so I'm going to have to say uh, rugged Ronnie Garvin and uh, Dino Bravo. And, and Dino Bravo, I, I like the character Dino Bravo. That's a you know a guilty pleasure of mine. I like What you know, was his Dino character? His character was he pounded he, his chest. That was his character. <laughs> the Canadian strongman. You didn't think that was cool? He did laps, like, right before the match, bro. Like, it was like, listen, I got so much energy. I'm so much better than you. I could do laps before and after the match. I'm going to have to say Rugged Ronnie Garvin because he's in it. Um, Rugged Ronnie Garvin and um, Dino Bravo is definitely worse than the blindfold match. That's that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Dino Bravo, even, he did a job to the barbells, too. Uh, <laughs> he, power lift he did. He definitely did. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't have a problem with this because, like you said, this is a double whammy. Two dudes that are like the Rougeos that are automatic fast forward as soon as they come on anything. I, I don't. I watched the the blindfold match again last night. I didn't like it as a kid. I don't like it now. Could you imagine? I know it's a different time. It's twenty years later. If they tried to do that today just what happened and walking around pointing at each other and the thing with the chair outside the ring. And like, if they tried to do that today, man, that would have Vicky Guerrero heat, dude. That would be just on. It'd be nuclear. John, we appreciate your time, dude. Take care. SOS is on the way. Check it out. All varsity music. It's coming in April. John, we appreciate you, man. Can't wait to hear the album. 
Absolutely, and I can't wait to come to the studio with you guys and do this in person, man. This has been fun, man. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Take care. And the final match of the first round pits one of the favorites, the two seed, Big Show, against Aki Bono in that sumo match. They take on Stacy and Jackie against Sable and Tori at Mania 20. And here to decide the winner, Mr. Punderful himself, the meme master on Twitter, James Vanderbeek. Hey, this is Jeremy Tate, a.k.a. James Vanderbeek, for the worst WrestleMania match ever tournament. Uh, stack brackets each region, tons of great or terrible matches to pick from, uh, depending on how you, how you take it. And my personal pick will have to be uh, Aki Bono and Big Show because it was a big schmoz. Nothing really came from it. It was all silliness. Just another chance to use Big Show as he is best suited. Goofiness. I mean, I enjoyed the match, but it definitely is nothing to write home about. Um, also, some guy mentioned Bam Bam and Lawrence Taylor. That match was incredible. I don't. It's not even included in the bracket because it's so good. Uh, yeah ridiculous anyway yeah Aki Bono big show worst match in Wrestlemania history thanks to James and thanks to you for tuning in we are just getting started our number two will be the rest of the tournament rounds two through the championship and you're not gonna believe a couple of the matches that made it to the Elite Eight in the final four it drops this weekend hope you can tune in once again we'll see you then